Hi, I'm Don Goldberg with TechView, and guest today, our very own Wyeth Ruthven, who has uh, been working on a lot of social media um, activities, and we're here to actually talk about politics and elections. Not Wyeth, and thanks for being here, because nice. we're talking about who won or lost, but really how are they using technology in these campaigns, and specifically how they use Twitter. So we've got the Massachusetts race, which mm -hmm. was a couple weeks ago, and then late last fall we had Virginia and New Jersey. You've done a pretty extensive look at the use of Twitter by the candidates and the impact that had. So tell us kind of what prompted this and what you found. Well, that's right. Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at Twitter and see how campaigns are using it and how that differs from how, you know, ordinary followers, you know, and users of Twitter are using are using the medium. And what I did is I took I took all of the tweets over a three-month period for um, for New Jersey and Virginia governor's races. Mm -hmm. It was the last three months of that campaign. For Massachusetts, it was the three-month window between the time the candidates filed for office in November right. and, and the January special election. Mm -hmm. So it had the primary election and the, the general election that took place in Massachusetts. Um, looked at their, at their tweets, used some of the ex um, other Twitter analytic studies have kind of categorized tweets in various ways. I kind of adapted that mm -hmm. methodology to to campaign. So I looked at like you know which tweets were news oriented, where they were links to like external content, which mm -hmm. were like calls for action, like you know volunteer or you know fundraising, give money, um, which were more self promotion about here's my position on this issue or here's where I'm going to be speaking at this you know mm -hmm. this time and which and, and which were actual more conversational you know the actual social aspects of social media um, one of the things that I found out was is that for most campaigns um, Twitter and social media is still largely a one-way medium they mm -hmm. were pushing a lot of content out right. but they weren't interacting a lot with you know with their followers with other people on Twitter uh, Massachusetts was actually an, an exception to that. Um, you know, for both uh, Scott Brown and Martha Coakley, about one out of every five tweets they had was either like a reply message or a retweet. It, mm -hmm. was, it was direct communication with their followers, which is a big jump from, you know, really in, in, New, in New Jersey and Virginia, it was just a handful of people communicating in that way. So you can really see the, me the medium is continuing to evolve and is actually evolving fairly quickly mm -hmm. um, in that respect. So talk about, let, let's, let's talk about New Jersey and Virginia, the gubernatorial races from last fall, mm -hmm. because I think you found that there were some things that worked and some things that didn't work, and then we can come back to Massachusetts. That's true. I think I, one of the things um, in Virginia and New Jersey and different campaigns had different approaches to it, but you had campaigns with multiple accounts which tended to create message dilution. Mm -hmm. I think with um, with Cree Deeds in Virginia, he had uh, six different official accounts. The candidate had an account, uh, senior staff had their own accounts. They created special like micro accounts to handle certain issues. Mm -hmm. They had one issue for like rural voters, one Twitter account for rural voters, one Twitter account focusing on um, Bob McDonald's thesis. And mm -hmm. it was really just devoted to news and information about, about the thesis. As a result of having that many accounts, um, the messages were to diffuse to mm -hmm. really break through. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, Creed Eats had about 3,700 followers on his account, but only about 1% of those followers followed any of the other accounts that the campaign was trying to push information out on. Mm -hmm. So I, I think really having one account per campaign is the best way of doing it. That's mm -hmm. what Bob McDonald did. Mm -hmm. um, he, and he would kind of alternate between tweets that were him personally tweeting to his followers and tweets that his staff were putting up and they would always distinguish, you know, which was a staff tweet, which was a tweet by the principal. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result of keeping everything on one account and driving people to that Twitter page, um, he had a lot more followers and he had a lot more reach in terms of his of his messages getting through. Now a lot of things that we talk about as communications folks is in this day and age you need to have lots of different tactics to reach different types of audiences but it sounds like what you're saying at least for political campaigns is that if you if you divide and conquer that way you're really losing the ability to penetrate to your audiences. That's that's true because I think I think having one of the other things about Twitter is is you're dealing with like people who might not be following everything about the campaign. Um, Massachusetts is actually a good example of this, that 
once Scott Brown's campaign began to catch fire, not just in Massachusetts, but nationwide, you saw this huge upsurge of, um, of followers going to mm -hmm. his account. They, these people wanted to learn more. They didn't necessarily know where to go, but on Twitter they found his, his feed. And, and really, from, uh, from the beginning of January, his followers increased about 600%. In the last week of his campaign, his, his followers doubled just in that amount of time. And he had you know, over 10,000 followers by the time that campaign was over, which you know, was really phenomenal, both, both in terms of the number of followers and the speed at which he, he gained them. So perhaps the lesson there is if you get some sort of buzz because that Massachusetts race you know, got a lot of attention mm -hmm. when it looked like the Republican was gonna win, which they did, if you capitalize through Twitter, you can really maximize your outreach you know, more, more so than probably any other medium. That's right. I mean, it's, it's a scalable medium, mm -hmm. and, and it, it's, it's a very easy way for followers to then retweet those messages. It's a very viral medium, and I think, I think you know, campaigns would be wise to use it in that way. Yeah, and I'm sure as politicians, they're going to continue that conversation because that's the way they're going to keep in, in front of people. That's right, and, raise money. and Scott Brown has continued to, to tweet. Bob McDonnell has continued to use his account. He used it, you know, in, when he did his State of the Union response as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's... There's some follow through in this that it's it's not just a one shot you know, a one shot deal for these campaigns. It's part of an ongoing conversation they're having with voters. So looking down, you know, into the 2010 elections, the regularly scheduled elections coming up this fall, if you had one lesson or one message to send to political campaigns, I think really it's it's a matter of you know having one account per campaign, you know, encouraging calls to action, involving your followers in the everyday parts of the campaign, the nuts and bolts that, that win elections. And, um, and you know, using your Twitter account to kind of aggregate links, links to external content, you know, favorable news articles and things like that, so that the, the Twitter feed actually kind of becomes its own feed of information about the campaign that's been curated, mm -hmm. you know, to put your candidate in the best possible light. Mm -hmm. Well, why? Thanks for uh, for being here, and that's a really right. interesting study. I think what we're seeing here is that technology, um, like Twitter, which a lot of people are wondering, well, how do you really use this, uh, does have serious implications and, and, and practical uses that are advantageous if they're if they're done the right way. That's true. So, well, we're going to have a link to your study, um, you know, on the website on TechView, so people can find that. But thank you for being here. Okay, thanks, Don. Great. I'm Don Goldberg for TechView.